Hi there. Terry Bailey, Senior Minister of Indian Run Christian Church in East Canton, Ohio. Wanted to speak to you today and in a few days to come about songs in the Bible. Last time we looked at the instructions from Psalm 96 about always singing a new song to the Lord because He is always doing a new work among the peoples. And I I want to start with what I believe to be the first full-length structure song in the Bible, and it comes in the 15th chapter of the book of Exodus, and it's a long song. I'm only going to read just a little bit of it, the first four verses. Then Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song to the Lord and said, I will sing unto the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will extol him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea, and the choicest of his officers are drowned in the Red Sea. Well, even from that brief introduction, the occasion is easy to identify. The beginning of the Exodus, after God had worked through the plagues to liberate the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, they found themselves trapped between the waters of the sea and the advance of an army of the fickle Pharaoh who had decided that he wanted his slaves back and his national pride restored. And at that moment, there was much crying and weeping before there was any singing because everybody figured they were toast. They were equipped for an exodus, not a battle. And they did not see any hope. It was either drown in the sea or perish under the wheels and the blades of the advancing Egyptian army. Into this moment of dread and fear, God sent his word, and he also sent the pillar of cloud and fire to temporarily hold back the army of the Egyptians and his wondrous power to part the waters of the Red Sea and dry the way before the children of Israel so that they marched through that impossible barrier. And it closed behind them as the Egyptians were finally allowed to continue their advance. And that army they so feared perished without their having lifted a hand or lost a single life. Because they had felt so helpless and hopeless, they now felt all the more joyous for this profoundly great work that God had done in their sight. So, Moses led them in the writing and singing of this song, praising God for his latest work, new to them at the time. We have been through many things, and God has always been faithful and delivered his people. And we pass through this trial now, and I understand a sense of helplessness when you stand before something like a virus. What can you do? It's so small, but it's so unstoppable unless you can just quit breathing or seal yourself in a hermetic bubble of some kind. What can we do? It seems that we are helpless before the onslaught. And yet as God is greater than the mightiest of armies, God is greater than the smallest of microbes. And God will do a new work in this time. 
And I hope that our present sense of helplessness and dread will only make our joy the greater when God has delivered us on the far side of this trial and we will sing a new song unto him. If you would pray with me. Father God, we confess that we have no way to save ourselves at this time. All of our efforts seem only to prolong the day until this virus infects us and inflicts what it will. But we know your greatness. And we pray, Father, that we will see it in new and mighty works that you pour out in this situation and that we will express our joy in new songs. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.